My name is Sarah Morrell. I live in Wanganui. I live at home with my parents, Linda and Ben Morrell, and my brother, Tim. My condition is called Mokio 4A. It's quite a rare genetic disorder. And that's why I'm small stature and I'm unable to walk anymore. But this is me and I just do what I love doing and get on with it. So I'm at the Wanganui Hospital. I come here once a week to get my IV infusion venison. The process takes around five to six hours, just depending on what's happening. Hi. Hey. Yeah, it's going good. Oh, yay. Hospital Thank you. Uh, how's the infusion going? <laughs> yeah, it's going all right. My condition is called Mokio 4A, mucopolysaccharidosis. That's 21 litres, so it's quite long. There's about four or five of us in New Zealand. I'm missing an enzyme called Galen's that normally eats up all the bad toxins that build up around your body. Do you remember me much before I had bimism? What I was like? Let me, let me wreck my brains a bit, because it's been a while, isn't it? So this is like, so it was about 10 years ago yeah, you started Yeah, yeah, I think Bimism. it was 2013. 2013, so it'd be 10 years. Yeah. Wow, your 10th oh. anniversary. Oh, my goodness. It's... I've never thought about it like that before. No. Wow, that's come wow, really that's fast. Um... I think the challenges my parents faced was that, because, you know, it's a big deal finding out, oh, your child's going to have difficulties. It ain't going to be easy. Yeah, I had a normal pregnancy, and, you know, I, I'm not one of those people that um, it was nauseous or sick. It was just a happy time. Sarah was about nine months. She started having a little sticky-out chest. Pigeon chest, it's called. The GP referred me to an orthopaedic surgeon. He said, I think I know what this is, but I need to do some tests. It took about six months, and he said, Sarah's got this rare disease called mucopolysaccharidosis, Morchio 4A. So we said, well, what does that mean? And he said, there's no treatment and there's no cure. Oh, Hello, Sarah. There was grieving because here's your beautiful little daughter, Sarah, and she's got something wrong with her. And back at that stage, telling us that there's no cure or no treatment, that was a bit of a shock. Mm. Hi, Sarah. So we didn't know where we were going. And what it would mean for Sarah. When I was diagnosed, my paediatrician told my parents, focus on what you have and not what you don't. That's kind of been the family motto, and that's how I've always lived my life. Sarah was growing normally until she was about four, and then it started to show. Her joints were weak. Her elbows started getting knobbly. Her knees became not kneed. Because I was a nurse, I didn't want any surgery for Sarah before she was five, so that she was untraumatised. For me, that was my gift to her. Mum, coming from a nursing background, understood the trauma it can be for a child, and so she's sheltered me for that for at least the first five years of my life. Mm. <laughs> when I was five, I had my final infusion. I was about eight or seven. I had my knees done. Then when I was about 12, when I put rods down my back to keep it straight, because it was like a S shape, about six years ago now, they finished off the spinal infusion 
and fused my neck to my spine, my back. So that's why I can't turn my head. Every time I've had surgery, I've had to find a new normal. It's annoying, but I got no choice. She was finding it more and more difficult to, to walk. She needed a wheelchair, mm. and that, that was a whole different way of life. And here she is, all ready to go. She was actually six or seven before we, we got her into an actual wheelchair. I tried one out, and I fell in love with it. I guess that's kind of the part of the family that was into cars, so that rubbed off. But I do love going fast. You know, my friends are always telling me off, but slow down, slow down, you're going too fast. It's like, well, just hurry up. <laughs> Bimism has changed my life. I've got way more energy. I've got pretty much no pain, which is incredible. Bimism is an M-zone replacement therapy. The process takes around five to six hours. Every half an hour to an hour, they take my vital signs and slowly increase the drip. My vitals are all right. Yeah, they're all stable, all good. Oh, that's good. Not misbehaving at all. No. Well done. Well, you ring me if you need me. Yes, I will. Yeah. Thank you so much, Linda. Just take the piece of paper with me. Yeah. So it's my rest day. See you later. Normally the day before, I'm quite tired, and I can get quite tired during the process. But then the next day, I'm, I'm back to my full self. When I was 13, Mum heard about this study in America, learning more about my condition to see how it progressed over time. And so for five years, I did a yearly trip to San Francisco for a week. On my fifth trip, they said, look, we've got this drug trial. Would you like to be a part of it? And, you know, we kind of went, huh? You know, stopped and took our breath, or well, tried to take our breath. And, um, you know, and it was like, OK. Dad and I decided that we would do it together. It was originally going to be a 12-month trial and then crept out for another six months, so we were away a year and a half. Dad and I would tour around California when we weren't in the hospital and we turned it into a real adventure. So that was a big changing point. You know, I was able to adjust myself in the wheelchair and I was able to hold a cup up to drink and, you know, eat more food and that kind of thing was better at using a fork. But they thought that New Zealand wouldn't have the facilities. Well, yeah, one of the alternatives was for me to get the job was to fly to Sydney once a week. I mean, who knows how that would have gone? I mean, yeah, it would be nice first time, but I think after a while it would have gotten a bit tedious. And but the Biomarin Pharmaceutical Company came out to New Zealand. And they came to Wanganui just to see what the facilities were. And they said, they're perfect. So I'm very lucky that I can just go for a 10 minute drive instead of having to fly to Australia once a week. It's hard to imagine my life before because it's changed everything about it. I wake up at seven when my support workers come and they shower me and get me ready for the day. So we're just trying to do it up to two seconds so that we pump up all the base of your lung um, with lovely air. <coughs> and then, once we've opened up all those airways, we do a um, pump up and then a push out, and we try and suck out some of that 
any gunk that might be down there, which not, there isn't usually. There's a lot of things that she has to manage in her life. The last seven years have been sensational. The cough assist and her CPAP have just made a huge difference. And yeah. Vimism has made her life. Love you, babe. <laughs> see you later, Dad. Have a good day. Okay, see you, Dad. Love you. Bye. 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 Hi, Chantel. And then my other carer, Chantel, takes me to work. My work ID. I remembered it this morning. <laughs> That's good. I work five hours. Independence is a big, important aspect of my life. Go to work. I make sure that I can do things as much as I can for myself. A few years ago, I found out v Dub had their own mobility van. I saw it and I was like, I need that. It means I can just drive into the back, get strapped down, and then I can travel without having to be lifted out of my wheelchair. Rain's give me a text so that I can pick you up. Yeah, sounds good. Alright. Alright then. See you later. See you later. So I'm able to work part time, which is pretty awesome. Vimazin changed my life. Without Vimazin, I wouldn't be working. I don't know many other people similar to me that are working. I'm the Disability Support Coordinator for the Wanganui Hospital. So I get to help the disabled community, my community, get vaccinated. So yeah, so we're, I'll, I'll send you through an, an email and um, we'll talk again soon. OK, bye. Julie had organisations got in touch with me and they're interested about the new COVID booster because they employ disabled staff. And so I suggested that maybe you and your team could go down to them yep. and then we can arrange a date and a time yep. and go from there. Yep, perfect. I organise outside clinics at their certain places, like either at their homes or in a comfortable area. I help write up reports about the disabled community, and, but I've been able to learn more about different disabilities. This job has definitely transformed the way I've lived my life. It gives me something to look forward to during the day, gets me out of bed. How's everything going here? It's going really well, yeah. <laughs> Cantor tells me you've just sent through some more. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I updated the um, report checklist. Yeah, yeah She notices things that we perhaps don't notice. And her knowledge and her enthusiasm for her role. I mean, she's done it, I think she did a business diploma. Uh, just constantly pushing herself, you know, to do all that she can. And how was it coming in with that foam piece? Yeah, it makes it a lot better. That's good. Less bumps, the better. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll see you guys later. OK, thanks. OK, bye. Right. See you later. Through this job as Disability Support Coordinator, I've discovered that I want to make everything accessible for all. No matter what your circumstances are, if you can make it accessible for one person, you can make it easier for everyone else. Can you please get me a drink? Yep. My care Chantal come in the mornings and throughout the day and look after me while mum and dad can go off and live their life. I don't want to be, you know, have my parents hovering over my shoulder all the time, I want to do my own thing. I think having Sarah as like a best friend that whole, like throughout my entire life from birth has been 
so beneficial to understand, like us both understand disability and get through life together with that. I am legally blind. I have a chromatopsia. Oh my goodness, those photos look incredible. I know. We had such an amazing day. I was so honoured to be your maid of honour. It was an oh. honour for me as well. <laughs> So we've been friends since... Since I was born, pretty much. Yeah. You know, I would walk to you. Yeah, you would walk to, to me. And then we'd go to school together. Yeah, walk to school. And and jump on the back of your wheelchair so I didn't have to walk. Exactly, exactly. Perfect. You know, any opportunity. She's my best friend. She's like a sister to me. And she's the one person in my life that totally gets it. Like, we both have a disability and we both get it. Sarah is very mischievous. She's got a little wicked <laughs> strike to her. Like she's, she's got wicked jokes, wicked sense of humour. I love it. She makes me laugh all the time. <laughs> I can't believe you're married. I know, it's crazy. I do. You're just uh, the third sister. The third sister, yeah. To get married and, yep, one more to go. And then you, babe. Yep. I just got to find the right guy. Yeah. He'll come <laughs> along. He'll come yeah, along. I'm sure I will. I'll find them. This is the living room. Um, we've only just recently painted it green. Mum and Dad have done that. Dad's always wanted a dark green room. And so this is pretty much our at-home movie theatre. My grandmother she was a sculptress. Grandma definitely taught me a way to communicate and speak out when you're not, when you want something to change. This is a painting I did when I was at Intermediate. It took me a year to do, based on the artist Hundavathia. And so the thing about him is he doesn't like straight lines and he loves weird colours and that pretty much spoke to me, because I'm hopeless at drawing straight lines. This is my room. Everything I need is at one level, and so nothing's too deep, and I can reach everything. My organised chaos. My hobbies is definitely to do with stationery. I'm obsessed with it, and I love stickers. I've actually got a silhouette cutting machine, which I print and cut my own stickers. It's the arty side of my family coming through me. When I was like little, I actually wrote a poem and my dad keeps the original in his wallet. And it's, I am me, I am free. I'm a girl who's wants to try as hard as she can to reach the top of the world. Now, what I'm thinking, because we had to cut out the old lemon tree that died... Yeah. ..that we extend the deck a little bit where it was... Yeah. ..so that you can be nearer the people sitting around the barbecue right yes. there without having to Go all drive the way around. around and down the ramp. Oh, perfect, reckon? yeah. That'll be good. My parents and my family have always involved me in everything. They do. I think, I think so. it'll look really good. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. Let's go for it, eh? Yeah. All right. Let's do it right now. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh. This isn't my style. I want to do something different, go in a different direction. But, you know, there's, that's the thing with living at home. She still gets that <laughs> opinion and I still need her help. I think I respect your opinion. Oh, you do. I Som do. Sometimes. Um, <laughs> it's just that I don't respect your taste. Sometimes yeah. your taste isn't as great as it should be. Uh, apparently I take after my father when it comes to yeah. style. <laughs> ben can do um, formal really casually and uh, we love that about him. So um, Sarah's exactly the same. Yeah. No fuss. Thank you very much. It can be fine, difficult to find.
the right size clothing. But one of the things I found is my mum is a great sewer. OK, let's see if it works. So if the sleeves are too long or the dress length or the skirt was too long, they can shorten it and make it fit my body shape because it is a bit wonky in some places. I'll admit it. Um, I get frustrated at that, like most women do, not having the perfect look, but I just, you know, make it work. Just come and have a look and see where you think that's the right size. I, I mean, think it's going to be a good choice to wear the work. Yeah, and Especially it goes with your eyes. It looks really neat, Sarah. I think it looks awesome. Because, you know, I want to do my own thing. So I try and be as independent as possible. My parents have definitely focused on my life and living it. Sarah, she's just made me appreciate life and what you can make out of it, no matter what the odds are. Do what you can with what you've got. Go for it. The most important thing that Sarah brings to me is joy. Joy in life and joy in every little moment. She's just given us just joy and happiness. I do have challenges, but I guess I've never really focused on them. Every day, there's always something new and I'm always discovering another way of doing things. And yeah, I just go along for the ride.